Hello? Okay. Thanks, Asma. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. It's been an incredibly exciting week for me. Uh, trying to figure out where we are today, where we've been, and where we're going. Um, let's see. Let's get this started here. No, no. Okay. So, my wife's family has a favorite expression. They grew up in a small town in the Italian Alps. If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. And it reminds me a little bit of what's been happening here this week. Over the course of the week, we've learned about different terminology that's been used to describe what today we're referring to as the sharing economy. Whether it's peer-to-peer -peer economy, the just-in-time economy, the sharing economy, uh, or collaborative consumption, which my understanding is that what, that's what the insiders in the room are using, uh, we have a slightly different view. Uh, we've been facilitating home exchanges through a family-owned business for 23 years, and we feel that there's a common thread that runs through the movement that is taking place today, and it's quite a bit simpler. This is the sharing economy. It's two people exchanging an experience over a milkshake. Now, admittedly, the catalyst to this experience was technology. The invention of the blender and the facilitation of electricity allowed for the release of frozen assets being milk and the sharing of an experience through a distribution system called a straw. But what makes this different is exactly what's been taking place for hundreds of years before it. It's the sharing of the experience. And what we've found that is unique to the sharing economy is how it makes you feel. Our definition of the sharing economy is how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel good? So when you ask yourself, is this a sharing economy company, the definition is, it's how it makes you feel. You'll know it when you feel it. So, one myth debunked of the sharing economy, that's a greedy hoarder, sharing economy monster, false. The sharing economy is not an exciting new trend. There is a common theme that has run through the evolution of this development for hundreds of years, and much of it is about returning to those common values that brought us here today. Second myth that often is asked in the context of the sharing economy is, are we just building another technology bundle, uh, a bubble, excuse me? Is this going to displace employees, and are we headed for a terrible crash? Well, I'm not a stock analyst, but the current market is trading at ratios much more consistent with what we've seen historically, about 19 times price to equity ratios. The last tech bubble was 150 plus. The companies in this room and the companies we've been talking to this week are building real companies and they're creating real value and they're building millions of jobs. And these jobs have allowed people to return to the workforce. They've allowed people to work from home. They've allowed people the flexibility to travel and work remotely. They've allowed people to retire early, go back to school, and fund entrepreneurial companies that they develop while working in the sharing economy. This myth, we feel, is false. We're very optimistic about these trends. There are certainly issues of how the values are being distributed. There are issues of benefits and how people are compensated. Right now, people are trading things like security at a job for flexibility. They're trading vacation for time off. There are issues of wages. But Blah Blah Car and Uber, they're here this week not just to talk about the sharing economy, they're here to recruit people, right? And as those markets grow and as they compete in the job market, those people will have more leverage and the wages will go up and the benefits will improve and that is happening very quickly. The sharing economy 
creates bad behavior, it perpetuates free riders. Free riders is an economic term. It means someone who is a taker. So imagine the dinner you plan with a group of your friends and you bring everyone out and they order the most expensive thing on the menu knowing that you're gonna split the bill evenly. Isn't that the type of behavior perpetuated by the sharing economy? In 23 years and over a million exchanges, we've seen exactly the opposite. I'll ask everyone in this room, how many times have you returned a rental car to an agency, maybe your favorite agency, and you approached the desk and said, I'm really sorry, the car's dirty, I'd like to compensate you for that. How many times have you brought it to get it washed before you return it? If I lent you my car keys today and said, please take my car, drive my car, it's, it's idle this weekend, and you ran through a mud puddle and you returned me the keys, whether or not you'd say something to me, it's very likely your behavior would be influenced. You'd probably bring it to be washed beforehand, you'd disclose it to me, and you'd offer compensation, however that plays out. In our experience, one of my biggest surprises in exchanging homes is the hospitality and generosity that is facilitated by the human experience. When you add a face to the sharing, the sharing the, 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 the transaction, it's a totally different experience than a faceless entity. And for us, the sharing economy makes you feel good by reintroducing that personal relationship. There's the monster. Government regulation is critical to protecting the participants of the sharing economy. Barry Drusen re recently issued a, uh, uh, published a paper describing that social norms can replace government regulation if there's repeated interaction and transparency. I like to call that the fashion police. Maybe you don't need a school uniform if you live in a neighborhood where you're comfortable how the kids dress. Now, we certainly wouldn't want the fashion police to, de to design our spacesuits. I would suggest that government regulation is critical to the sharing economy, but we need to be very careful not to over-regulate and look to the social norms that are evolving and the controls they put in place. There are review processes there are ways to authenticate, there are interactions that self-regulate, and in many cases, government regulation is not needed. We have not been regulated for 23 years, and we've had very minimal experiences. Look up home exchange, home exchanging on the internet, and <laughs> this is a concept that's existed for well beyond our company's existence, and it's a tremendous experience because People are interacting on a personal level. Technology is being used to facilitate now their relationships, not replace it. Government regulation has never been needed. False. The sharing economy is a new age of capitalism. It's the golden age, and it's, uh, it's a new generation. Well, a lot of people ask me, the sharing economy, that seems like an oxymoron. What is the sharing economy? Sharing is not economical, <laughs> right? Isn't that the antithesis of capitalism? Well, most capitalists, if you ask them, would you like to maximize and optimize the utilization of your assets? My grandfather used to lock his tools and his grandchildren and our neighbors needed to sign a library card to check out those tools. To him, that was his way of viewing capitalism. When my grandfather passed away, the Goodwill Society was very happy to pick up a brand new set of tools that had no rust on them. Earlier this week, someone named uh, Jeremy Hyman spoke about the shift from hoarding currency as an asset to viewing our relationship with our assets as a flowing river that can be channeled. The way we see this is, these are traditional values that we've always had. 
the way we interacted with our community, the way we interacted with our assets, it made us feel good to share. And the technology that's being introduced today, our feeling is over time, it is not a replacement of this human inter interaction. There's an opportunity to use it to facilitate the human interaction. And whether or not any company fits within the definition of the sharing economy, it's really easy for us to participate in what they offer. How does it make you feel? Does it make you feel good? That's it, thank you very much. Thank you very much.